we're in an unusual moment in the world. Uh, and I think the moment that we're in is a, a kind of paradoxical moment. These 17 sustainable development goals represent something very, very unusual. They represent a global agreement, which is uh, almost unheard of in this world. So these goals are not to be taken lightly, these environmental goals. They are, even though it's hard for us, I think psychologically hard for us, look at how comfortable we are. Look at how rich we are. Uh, look at how we enjoy our lives. We cannot feel the earth moving beneath us in that we're undermining fundamentally all that makes this possible. France's tourism industry has lost nearly $800 million. For those who do go out, the sight of police patrols is the new normal. And it's easy to forget, but the country is still under a state of emergency and will be until January 2017. French people have indeed become accustomed to seeing soldiers, heavily armed soldiers, patrolling the streets. After the Paris attacks, there have been attacks in Brussels, there's been violent protests across France, and also there's been attacks in the Mediterranean city of Nice, all that coupled together. These goals represent an agreement of every member state of the United Nations on a way forward in global cooperation for the coming generation. And they were followed by an equally momentous agreement just a few weeks after September 25th, uh, 2015, last year, when these 17 goals were adopted. Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States. It's being called the most stunning upset in political history. A second night of anti-Trump protests in cities across the country. Some turning violent. In Portland, police say a rally turned into a riot when demonstrators started vandalizing vehicles and buildings, throwing things at police and blocking this bridge. Some so upset they burned several small American flags. And tonight, an 11-year-old Texas boy claims he was beaten by classmates because he voiced his support for President-elect Trump. By incendiary words that we haven't heard before in politics. A viral video that may be hard for you to watch. It shows a local mom kicking her child out of the house because he voted in a mock election for Donald Trump. In this video, she can be heard yelling, even cussing at the boy who is visibly upset. In this video, you can hear Chicago area teens yelling, he voted for Trump, while others beat a driver in the middle of the street. Momentous possibilities that were undreamt of by earlier generations. Wars are raging, and civil strife and conflict are raging across a swath of nearly 10,000 kilometers now, from the Sahel of Africa into Central Asia. And there is an alarm of a world that seems to be spinning out of control. One thing you learn as a UN official is there are a lot of countries in the UN and they're all facing problems. Every place I go is in the midst of environmental stress. And sometimes it's shocking, a, a kind that you don't even realize or that I don't realize. A few weeks ago I was in Tehran and looked out the window and it was completely gray in the middle of the day and it looked like a Beijing afternoon to me. That's not chemical haze, that's sand. I'd never seen a sandstorm that way. But because of the drying of the surface throughout the Middle East, there is a massive 
amount of dust and sandstorms now that are basically destroying the land, the crops. A super moon is set to illuminate our skies tomorrow night, bigger and brighter than any full moon for almost 70 years. We have not only a full moon, not only a super moon, but the largest super moon we've seen here in decades. It's expected to be the brightest super moon since 1948. That's up to 14% closer than normal. It's the moon's closest orbit around Earth since 1948. It will be part psychological, part factual that you'll actually see this thing uh, a little bit larger in the sky. The hour is drawing close um, where Donald J. Trump will, will be the president-elect of the United States. As the night wore on and one result after another seemed to go to the Republicans, the feeling here of having a celebration or a party in Manhattan began to evaporate. People began to leave even before the final result. This criminal government cartel doesn't recognize borders, but believes in global governance, unlimited immigration, and rule by corporations. It also believes in no borders. Just come on, folks, come on in. Speaking in secret to a foreign bank, again, just revealed, Hillary Clinton said, my dream is a hemisphere of common market with open trade and open borders. Well, there go the rest of your businesses and there goes your country, folks. She doesn't say that. Behind closed doors, when she thought no one was listening, she pledged to dissolve the borders of the United States of America. No borders. You don't have borders, we don't have a country. WikiLeaks has given us a window into the secret corridors of government power where we see a former Secretary of State announcing her desire to end forever the American independence that our founders gave to us and wanted us to have. American soldiers have fought and died to win and keep America's freedom. And now Hillary Clinton wants to surrender that freedom to these open borders, open trade, and a world government. And by the way, we want a government for the United States. We're very happy with it. We're very happy. What it is basically is a, uh, a road map to totalitarian global government and they don't even really bother to hide it that much anymore. Uh, the slogans transforming our world and nobody is going to be left behind and they emphasize this over and over again. Nobody is going to be left behind. You cannot run to the woods. There is no escaping this, right? So if you think I'm going to build a bunker and I'm going to save a lot of food, that's not going to work. Nobody is going to be left behind. And they, uh, but the end goal really is, is very simply a totalitarian world system. They call it the New World Order a lot. If you listen to their speeches, you know, George Bush in 1991 went on TV, said the purpose of me invading Iraq under the UN is to create a new world order. And he told us what the new world order was, right? It's a world where the UN peacekeeping forces can implement the vision of the UN's founders, who we went over at the beginning, right? Stalin, Alger Hiss, these types of people. Why would we want UN peacekeeping forces implementing this totalitarian vision? Well, I don't know, ask George Bush. Um, so the strategy they've given us this to is divide the world up into these regional governments. And no country will be allowed to be left out of these things. That's why they freaked out about the Brexit, right? And they're trying, they're doing everything they can to prevent the British from actually leaving the European Union. Then they'll have to stick them in another regional government. They want a global currency, they want a global education system, etc., etc. And here's what Henry Kissinger told us. I call him Henry New World Order Kissinger. Um, he released a book in 2014, World Order. And whenever you hear World Order, order, you can just substitute the word order for government and you get a picture of what they're talking about. And he says, uh, the contemporary quest for world order will require a coherent strategy to establish a concept of order within the various regions and then to relate these regional orders to one another. Uh, even Sarah Palin, you know, lover, or hater, whatever, but uh, she's, you know, important figure in our political debate. And uh, she says it's time to get out of this UN, right? Um, the one world government apocalyptic stuff and it's good for that the British decided to leave and America can learn an encouraging lesson. Uh, it's time to dissolve the political bands that connect us to the agendas not in our best interest. May UN shackles be next on the chopping block. 
So uh, as for solutions, um, you know, I always tell people you, we need to pray, right? Um, God, actually, we're going to need his help for this. Um, and uh, the Bible tells us that too, right? If my people um, shall humble themselves and pray, uh, he will heal our land, right? He tells us that, and uh, that's a promise, and God keeps his promises. Um, we need to educate ourselves, and we need to educate others. Um, we need to educate our children and protect them from being dumbed down with these agendas. Uh, we need to not be misled by people who say it's the Jews or it's the Mormons or the Catholics or, you know, all this kind of hate. That doesn't accomplish anything. It's useless. It's counterproductive. It, uh, it goes nowhere. And on the other side, we have wars raging. We have a growing threat of, once again, something we imagined was not going to be with us ever again in our times of confrontation between superpowers, Russia and Europe and the United States facing off against each other, a kind of uh, raging name calling on both sides and opposing forces uh, in Syria these days, growing threats in the South China Sea, and a world that seems profoundly uncertain, unstable, and dangerous.